Look how many eagles there. That is awesome. Everywhere. Probably like 15, 20 just flying around. This is almost surreal. I'm back here in Point Roberts. It's been well over two years since I've been here. This was my home away from home for the longest time. I come here after work, I come here on the weekends. I have a friend with a cabin on the, uh, what would that be, the west side of Point Roberts. And yeah, it just feels amazing to be back here. The pandemic was hard on many of us. Honestly, the, uh, the hardest part for me, living in the lower mainland at the time, was not being able to visit this gym. This is uh, really good for my mental health, coming down here and just relaxing. Uh, in 2015, uh, I really got into the idea of living on a boat. And I started YouTubing around and came across La Vagabond. I'm sure many of you watched that uh, channel. And I saw Riley out there spearfishing and it reignited my, my love for being in the ocean. Uh, so right after that, I bought a cheap mask and came down here to those sand cliffs and uh, started snorkeling around, finding a little hermit crab. It was a blast, I really loved it. Uh, so I owe Point Roberts a lot. Oh, there's a little seal out there peeking out at me. When I was here in December 2019, I think that was, I found that old pocket watch. And uh, with my love for hunting for bottles, I figured this might be a good spot to scout out. Uh, the wind is up. Looks like the visibility is chocolate milk in this area. I guess we'll, uh, we'll find out here shortly. This area here used to be the site of an old cannery, but as with most fisheries, it wasn't sustainable. Uh, salmon populations were being decimated even back in the 18 and 1900s, early 1900s. So this place inevitably uh, shut down. Seems to be a growing trend in the commercial fishing industry. So good news-ish. Uh, if you look right over there, the visibility was absolutely horrid. And then uh, right here, the water's looking nice and clear. The problem is the uh, Fraser River dumps out a lot of sediment, and then the wind carries that sediment around the bay here. Same with the current, it just kind of flows all that sediment. So this little area, it's a little back eddy. It's a glassy common here, and I think it's protected from the Fraser. Um, so I'm gonna risk it, gonna go in there. Probably see a lot of buffalo scalping, uh, starry flounder. Uh, the U.S. fishing license down here, it's about 150 bucks U.S. Uh, so I'm probably not going to get one. I did uh, previous years in the past, but I never really utilized it. I spent a lot of money for one or two crab and a flounder. Uh, so I can just do that in Tawasson. I feel like a kid on Christmas morning right now. Uh, the spot is so, so peaceful. Around here, all these eagles, they learn to fly. Juvenile eagles, they come and fly up the... Uh, drafts that, that are pushed off these sand bluffs. So if you can see up there, I can count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 11 eagles just in that one spot. And then all throughout the trees on the hike down here, you can see eagle after eagle. I remember when I was younger, I'd come down here, lay on the ground, get some sun, and there'd be like 10 or 15 eagles just flying right above me. Yeah, Point Roberts, it's only 1,100 hectares. Uh, surprisingly not a part of Canada, but I think that's also a saving grace because uh, it's way less busy down here. Well, that's pretty cool. I'm obviously not going to try to swim with them, but there's like four or five seals out there. Oh wait, one, two, three, four, and then over there, five, six, seven. Whoa, that's neat. I never get my hopes too high when it comes to visibility, but I was welcomed back to the point with some great conditions. It's not eucalypt, but the water was clear and there was a decent amount of life out and about. For me, the nostalgic factor made this dive one of my most enjoyable in a while. There were lots of crabs and enemies and starfish to view. I also came across some starry flounder. I've given up on harvesting these guys as I've yet to find a recipe that I've truly enjoyed. I find them bony and they taste a little funky. They're fun to swim down though, and eat fish nonetheless. The great scalping is a master of camouflage. 
thankfully too, as they have a face only a mother could love. Just kidding, in all seriousness, I find them kind of cute. The poor guys seem to be covered in sea lice and worms. They don't seem to be bothered though. Even while face to face, they don't move an inch. For a snorkeler, this place is definitely a good spot to visit. There's lots to see in under 15 feet of water. There are also many buffalo scalpins at this spot. They are just as peculiar looking as the great scalpin, but are more colorful and beautiful in my opinion. Red, purple, orange, green, no two seem to be alike. This flounder was a beast, and they make easy prey for the seals. It's common to find flounder head on the shorelines in the area. I'm not sure what was going on here. Maybe an itchy back? They were both male, so it wasn't some mating ritual. I'm stumped. I also found some hermit crab. This spot is jammed with them. During my time in the water, I didn't see a single Lego-sized Dungeness. I'm happy I didn't buy that license. By the way, the sun came up this morning at 7.15 and high tide was at 7.30. So that's why I got a nice early start this morning. I was hoping to film some of the trail on the way down here. It's incredibly scenic, but uh, it's too dark. Uh, so maybe I'll get some shots on the way back up. Show you a view of uh, Point Roberts up on the bluff there. Also, this was my wife and I's second date. Our first date was at White Cliff Park. And uh, second date, I picked her up in Richmond. And then we came back down here and spent the day and I showed her my little slice of heaven. Um, Point Roberts, probably one of my favorite places on earth. Uh, growing up in Tawasson, you know, it was really accessible for me coming over here. And uh, yeah, it was my little oasis. I know I said it already, but my heart is incredibly full right now. Just being surrounded by nature without any other humans around me. It's a really good feeling. Uh, my dad used to keep his boat at the Point Roberts uh, Marina and we would cruise uh, over there to the San Juan Islands. Uh, I believe that's Susha right there. Oh, there we go. There's Susha or that one. One or the other. It's been a while since I've been there. We used to sail over there on weekends. My dad's a pilot so he had a lot of time off and uh, yeah, we go over there as a family. A lot of good memories at Susha. My wife and, and I took our little boat over there. I think that was 2017. It was incredibly choppy when we ripped over. We were fighting like five or six foot waves on a little uh, striper. We made it there, hiked around the island. We wanted to stay the night, but we didn't really prepare ourselves very well. We didn't have any food, and the uh, wind had died right off. It was super glossy on the way back, so we decided to rip it back to the Point Roberts Marina and just uh, crash the night there and grab some grub. First time I came here, I looked down and the water was crystal clear and I knew I had to go snorkeling. Look at those eagles, right there. Whoa, how gorgeous is this? A little correction, in 2013, I saw this view and grabbed that mask. In 2015, I stumbled across La Vagabond and Delos. They inspired my wife and I to buy a boat and live on it for a year, and Riley inspired me to take my snorkeling up a notch and pursue freediving. My entire freediving journey started with this view right here. I originally today had some pretty ambitious plans. I was going to hit up Lovely Point first and then keep my gear on, hike up and then uh, dive this breakwater here. Uh, obviously not going to now, it's a bit too chilly. But that breakwater right there, I really want to scope it out one of these days. I'm sure there'd be a decent amount of life if there's life on the uh, one at the Tawasson Ferries, right next to a big port. I'm sure this one would be good too. Uh, open to current and open to the Strait of Georgia. Point Roberts economy is essentially parcels, a grocery store, and gas stations. So when the pandemic hit, 
no Canadians were coming down here to get fuel and it really really costs a lot of families and businesses here to struggle. It feels good to be able to pump up American fuel again so uh, save money and helping out some people. Uh, got a coffee here too and uh, I'm gonna spend as much money as I can down here while I'm down. Let's make one last stop here at my friend Ian's cabin. It's got a beautiful spot right here on the water, right on the ocean. We used to come here pretty much every weekend. Friday, we'd always have a fire. We all had kids. Uh, Ian and Christy, they had a kid. They got a second on the way. And uh, Jasmine and I obviously have Sailor and Zaya. We were always looking forward to the day that we could bring them down here. And I think that day's around the corner, so it's gonna be fun to watch the kids playing on the beach down here. Uh, making with sand castles and looking for shells and beach glass, which I'm gonna go do right now. This spot has some awesome beach glass harvesting. I find uh, really, really good gems here all the time. The nicest piece I ever found was right on this beach, a big hunk of blue frosted beach glass. You don't see that very often around BC. Oh, there's that sailboat I saw earlier and more eagles flying around. I love the nature here. As I'm sure you can tell, I love this town. I've been excited to get down here and edit up a little video for a while. I have a bunch of areas around the point I'm gonna scope out. So stay tuned for more Point Roberts adventures to come. I hope everyone enjoyed the video and my free diving journey. Shout out to the places and people who have and continue to inspire me day to day. Peace and love everybody.